She went too soon. Don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. Love means never having to say you're sorry. My pa. Of course I ain't your pa. Ryan O'Neill, who became a star with Love Story, dies at 82. And I never would have imagined, I just adored her, that, that she'd leave me. Organize it late, and the priest came. He was a familiar face on TV before his breakout performance opposite Ally McGraw in the 1970 blockbuster movie, but it was overshadowed by years of personal problems. Ryan O'Neill, who became an instant movie star in the hit film Love Story, the highest grossing movie of 1970, but who was later known as much for the troubles of his personal life as for his acting in his later career, died on Friday. He was 82. That I had leukemia. He said it made me a nicer person. I just had a bone marrow. It's an honors program. Listen, Preppy, I know you've got at least a few. Really? His son, Patrick, confirmed the death in a post on Instagram. It did not give the cause or say where he died. Embarrassing. I don't know how that happened. It took a little time, of course. <laughs> but we've just been waiting. I have anyway. Mr. O'Neill was a familiar face on both big and small screens for a half century. But he was never as famous as he was after Love Story. Hey, if you're so convinced I'm a loser, why did you bulldoze me into buying you coffee? For people to want to laugh and enjoy it, you have to work extremely hard. He was 29 years old at the time and had spent a decade on television, but had made only two other movies when he was chosen to star in Arthur Hiller's Sentimental Romance, written by Eric Segal, who turned his screenplay into a best-selling novel. She needed me. But we needed you too. It was confusing. Mr. O'Neill's performance in Love Story as Oliver Barrett IV, a wealthy, golden-haired Harvard hockey player married to a dying woman played by Ally McGraw, garnered him the only Academy Award nomination of his career. Comedy is hard. Dying is easy. This is true. He had played the town rich boy Rodney Harrington for five years on the primetime soap opera Peyton Place. But in 1970, Hollywood was not that interested in television actors, and he'd been far from the first chance to star in Love Story. I never loved her more than I did during her illness. Just... John Voight turned the part down. Bew Bridges was supposed to do it, he told a reporter in 1971. When my name came up through Ali, they said, no. Ali said, please meet him. So we met in one of those conference rooms where everybody sits half a mile away from everybody else, he continued. Yeah. Sure. In fact, I tried to... Weeks later, they asked me to test. Then I didn't hear anything until they finally called and said, will you give us an extension of a week to make up our minds? In the end, Miss McGraw persuaded Paramount to cast Mr. O'Neill. He was hired for $25,000, a little more than $200,000 in today's currency, and his movie career was ignited. I still take medication yeah. and care, be careful. But uh, they say it's gone. For us to find a way back, we haven't quite got it yet. It never burned quite as brightly again, although he maintained a high profile throughout the 1970s, appearing in films like Barry Lyndon, 1975, Stanley Kubrick's elegantly photographed adaptation of William Makepeace Thackeray's novel about a poor 18th century Irish boy who rises into English society and then falls from those heights. And A Bridge Too Far, 1977, Richard Attenborough's epic tale of World War II heroism. He also demonstrated his knack for comedy in three films directed by Peter Bagdanovich. He co-starred with Barbara Streisand in What's Up Doc, 1972, a screwball comedy inspired by the 1938 Cary Grant, Katherine Hepburn movie Bringing Up Baby with Burt Reynolds in Nickelodeon, 1976, a valentine to the early days of movie making based on the reminiscences of Raoul Walsh and other directors, and with his nine-year-old daughter Tatum in the best known of the three films he made with Mr. Bogdanovich, Paper Moon, 1973. In Paper Moon, set in the Midwest during the Depression, Mr. O'Neill played a small-time swindler hornswoggled by a cigarette-smoking orphan who just might be his illegitimate daughter. Tatum O'Neill won an Academy Award for that performance. She remains the youngest person ever to win one of the four acting Oscars, and for a while, it appeared that Mr. O'Neill would become the patriarch of an acting dynasty. 
When Tatum starred as a Little League pitcher in the Bad News Bears 1976, she became the highest paid child star in history with a salary of $350,000, the equivalent of about $1.9 million today, and a personage of the net profits. Her younger brother, Griffin, seemed poised for stardom as well when it was announced that he would appear with his father in Franco Zeffirelli's 1979 remake of The Champ, the 1931 tearjerker about a washed-up former boxer and his son. But Mr. Zeffirelli ended up making the film with John Voight and Ricky Schroeder instead. And Griffin O'Neill's career never got off the ground. He did have one starring role in the 1982 film The Escape Artist, but that film was not a success. When he was next in the public eye five years later, it was not for his acting but for his involvement in a boating accident that killed his friend Jean Carlo Coppola, the son of the director Francis Ford Coppola. He was convicted of negligent operation of a boat but acquitted of manslaughter. The Neal family would go on to have many more problems with the law, with drugs and with one another. Mr. O'Neill, who was well known in Hollywood for his temper, when he was 18, he spent 51 days in jail for a brawl at a New Year's Eve party, was charged with assaulting his son Griffin in 2007. These charges were dropped, but a year later, he and Redmond O'Neill, his son with the actress Farrah Fawcett, were arrested on a drug charge. He pleaded guilty and was ordered to undergo counseling, while Redmond entered rehabilitation but continued to struggle with addiction. Tatum O'Neill had her own highly publicized drug problems and was estranged for many years from her father who she said physically abused her when she was a child. Mr. O'Neill's fame was beginning to slip by 1978 when Paramount offered him $3 million to star in Oliver's Story, a sequel to Love Story. He accepted even though his distaste for the project was clear. There's something cheap about sequels, he told the reporter, and this one's a complete ripoff. When the movie was released, the critics agreed. His days as an A-list star were soon over, although he continued to work steadily in the 1980s and 90s. His more memorable movies in this period included Partners, 1982, in which he played a heterosexual police detective who goes undercover with a gay partner played by John Hurt. Irreconcilable Differences, 1984, as a successful Hollywood director whose 10-year-old daughter, played by Drew Barrymore, sues him for divorce. And Tough Guys Don't Dance, 1987, a crime drama written and directed by Norman Mailer. He also co-starred with Miss Fawcett in the short-lived 1991 television series Good Sports. Most of Mr. O'Neill's later work was on television, including a recurring role on the series Bones. Patrick Ryan O'Neill was born in Los Angeles on April 20, 1941, the elder son of Charles O'Neill, a screenwriter, and Patricia Callaghan O'Neill, an actress. At 17, he joined his nomadic parents in Germany and got his first taste of show business as a stuntman on the television series Tales of the Vikings. He never took an acting lesson, but his striking good looks, as well as the anger that seemed to boil just below the surface, helped him win roles on television not long after he returned to Los Angeles. His marriages to the actress Joanna Moore and Lee Taylor Young ended in divorce. Miss Taylor Young, his co-star on Peyton Place, told an interviewer that their marriage never recovered from the success of Love Story, which she said brought a type of life which is not suitable for Ryan's personality. Mr. O'Neill was romantically linked with many actresses, but it was his on-again, off-again relationship with Miss Fawcett, which began when she was still married to the actor Lee Majors, that garnered the most attention. The couple never married but were together for almost 20 years before they separated in 1997. They later reconciled and were living together when Miss Fawcett died of cancer in 2009. In 2012, he published a book about their relationship, Both of Us, My Life with Farah. Besides his daughter Tatum and his son Patrick, a sportscaster, complete information on his survivors was not immediately available. In 2012, Mr. O'Neill revealed that he was being treated for prostate cancer. That diagnosis came 11 years after he contracted chronic myelogenous leukemia, which eventually went into remission. The last major role Mr. O'Neill played was himself. In the summer of 2011, he and his daughter starred in a reality show, Ryan and Tatum, The O'Neills, on Oprah Winfrey's cable channel, OWN. 
The series left the impression that the two had ended their long estrangement, but Mr. O'Neill later told an interviewer that it painted a false picture. We're further apart now than we were when we started the show, he said. Ryan O'Neill, love story actor, last words before he died. I have outlasted all desire. People leave strange little memories of themselves behind when they die. My dreams and I have grown apart. My grief alone is left entire, the gleanings of an empty heart.